Hey guys, Eri is here and welcome along to another video. We're here today back on GT Sport for the next round of the FIA Manufacturer Series. The series actually took a week off last week, which was rather convenient for me because I needed a week off, due to me and Aaron welcoming our new son Max into the world. Well done to those who guessed correctly his name, and don't worry for those who didn't but guessed Helmet, as you've opened my eyes and it's definitely top of the list if we have another boy for sure. And as always, before we get into this one, I just want to take a couple of moments to remind you, if you haven't already, to leave a like on the way in, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, well, address that issue immediately. So you join me here on our Outlap. After spending about 10% of the five minute session waiting in the pits, we're going to have enough time for three shots here, as I'm not going to pit and reset as I usually do. I'm not going to do that because the risk of running into traffic is quite high and the tyre wear for those three laps is going to be negligible. So I've dropped back here to try and find myself some space and we're going to get to it. Unfortunately though the space that we found didn't really help us on our banker lap and as we come round to finish the lap here you're going to see that we end up doing a 1 minute 28.519. And our second attempt was over before it begun. I ran a little bit too wide coming out of turn number one. Easily done here. Get myself a penalty which I then had to serve. Those who watched my iRacing stream on Tuesday will be familiar with that mistake that I made. And then I timed it up so that we had three seconds left to go for our final flying lap here. As you'll see we're sat behind a Jag. The distance should be fine though and we need to improve as we're currently sitting in 14th place. Not good when you're door number three in the lobby. Following my daily races stream on Monday night, where things went very well, my DR has jumped to 57k now, so the lobby and the opponents we're facing are much harder. But alas, we still need to improve. As you saw there, we were up in sector one, 0.168 ahead of my previous best, and then we were still up through sector two, just under two tenths now. And as we come across the line, we lost a little bit through that last sector, but still improved by a tenth to log a 128.418. So that would only unfortunately be good enough for 14th, despite being only 7 tenths behind the pole sitter. To show how close it was, a second ended up covering first all the way down to 19th, and 20th place didn't set himself a time. So I'm sure it would have been all 20 drivers within one second had he set a time. Now that wasn't obviously the starting position that I'd hoped for and we're going to have to do something a little bit different and really nail the strategy here if we're going to get a positive result out of this one. And we'll cover all the strategy later on in the video once we get these first couple of laps out of the way. So as we come round the penultimate corner here look how far we're back. It's a long long way. We've got so much work to do here but as the countdown timer expires we are away. And we're going to get a good run here out of the final corner, well at least in comparison to the Jag in front anyway, and we're closing on 13th as we cross the start finish line here. As we approach turn number one for the first time, I'm going to lift off and then brake nice and early. It's easy to get caught out, especially when we've got cold tyres and go wide, just as the Peugeot up ahead demonstrates. And because we did that, we got a nice exit and we're in a nice position here ready to take on the Jag on the long run down to turn number three. We're going to pull out here and take 13th as the four cars up ahead as you can see all go wide on their cold tyres. We're going to overtake Smokey here in the Merc as he rejoins and then we're going to gain another position overtaking the recovering Merc who coincidentally was the pole sitter upping us to 11th place now. But the Merc isn't going to be happy with that and he's going to barge his way back through and it's going to require absolute opposite lock from me to keep it facing in the right direction here on lap number one. More barging then occurs as the Italian comes back through but we need to be careful here. As you can see on the radar we have a car on the outside and we don't want to run him off. So we're two by two here coming through the left hander. He's going to hang it all the way around the outside and I just give up the position. I'm not going to challenge it here as we come up and over the crest into the penultimate corner. It's a long race here. We've got 19 laps which is going to equate to about half an hour. So we're going to live to fight another day. We'll just sit back, regroup and then go again. 
We're going to fast forward slightly here as we come under the Red Bull Bridge and we're arriving into T2 which is allegedly officially turn number three. We're in 14th after all the funneling games of the first lap. You can see the VW up ahead is on the move. He makes a move on the Jag here. We almost collect him and then we almost get collected by another recovering Jag as well. So we're up to 13th at this point and we're in a good position alongside the Italian for the right hander at the end of the straight. We pick our breaking point, outbreak him into the corner, and then I'm sure to give him space on the outside to not have a Hamilton Albon S situation. And having left him space on the outside, we successfully and cleanly take 12th place now. Crossing the line, start lap number three. We're now behind an Italian in the Peugeot. Again, taking it nice and easy into turn number one. The Peugeot is going to run wide, get up onto the sausage, which is going to compromise his exit. Now, that's going to allow us up and alongside. But what I'm going to do is try not to challenge this too hard here, as we want him, and in turn us, to stay with the group that you can see up in front. If I distract him, we'll start forcing him to defend and taking suboptimal lines too much. We will lose time and, more importantly, potentially the slipstream to the pack ahead, which is the most important thing with the strategy. So as I lift and coast here into turn number four, let's touch on that strategy a little bit. Obviously, we're at the Red Bull ring. We've got 19 laps here. The tyres available are soft, medium and hard, but you have to use the mediums and the hards. Fuel is a factor here, so all of that combined means that we've started on the mediums and we want these to last for as long as possible. Now, the wear isn't going to be a factor, it's going to be the fuel. So, because how long it takes to do a pit stop here, we need the fuel to last as long as possible because if we come in, it's going to force us to change onto the hard, which we do not want to do. So, it's all important here to change early up gears wise, so you'll see me do that, and also plenty of lifting and coasting whilst being in the slipstream. And with that explained, we're going to start lap number four here, and we're right behind the Italian, Ken, into turn number one once again. We just showed ourselves in his mirror in an attempt to remind him to push on, and up ahead there's absolute chaos. The Merc went round there, the VW ended up in the wall and almost collected us as he came back onto the track. And as a result, we're up into ninth place now. Ken here is going to make a late move onto Vegas. We make a little bit of contact with him as he tries to cut back, but nothing too bad. And as they battle up ahead, we're happy to sit here behind them. It's going to be behind Vegas as Ken makes the move, as long as Vegas stays with him. If Vegas begins to fall back, because of the aforementioned reasons, we're going to need to make a move on him because we cannot afford to lose time. Although we'll be in a slipstream saving fuel, we need to make sure we're on pace here. Rejoining the action here on lap number six, you can see that gap has formed between seventh and eighth. So we're going to have to make a move here on Vegas coming down into turn number three. So we pull out, go up the inside, make the move stick. We're careful on the exit just to make sure we don't spin or anything like that and now we're up to eighth place. Unfortunately though, we're out of the slipstream, so we're gonna to have to invest a little bit of fuel here in catching up with the Italian in front. We've gotta balance it though, because the more that we push, obviously the more fuel we use. However, the longer that we're not in this slipstream, also the more fuel we use. So it's a bit of a catch-22 situation, but we're gonna get our head down here to try and get in the slipstream, back in our comfort zone, and back saving fuel as soon as possible. It didn't however take too long for us to get back in the slipstream but unfortunately for us Ken is going to make a mistake there he's going to run a little bit wide and get himself a penalty which he's obviously going to have to serve the next time round which is going to drop him behind us and once again we're pushing ourselves through the air which is exactly not what we want at this point because we need to be saving fuel. Thankfully though, Kent is going to overtake us again into turn number three here on lap number 10. That's a good thing, because that's exactly where we want him. But Kent's going to make another mistake here as he goes wide coming out of the final corner. We just can't hang around this time. We've waited too long. There's been a couple of mistakes now, and we're going to overtake him and go up to seventh place. 
Once again though, it's going to make the fuel saving more difficult as he's not there to hide behind. He's going to serve his penalty though and drop right out of contention. So we're completely on our own here. It's us versus the fuel gauge now. And as we say that, this is when the race starts to get really interesting. We're going to move up to 6th here as the Citroen up ahead comes in off his mediums. And then on the next lap, lap number 15, two more drivers come in promoting us all the way up to 4th place. Now we can't get carried away here, we've got to continue just doing what we're doing as we've got two more laps before we come in and the fuel is going to be very, very close. Moving towards the end of the lap and you're going to see here that all three cars who were in front of us are going to come in and also the fuel warning light is on. So as we take the lead of this race and as we cross the line to start our in lap, we're going to have 1.2 laps of fuel left make that shortly 1.1 and 6%. Now that 6% is pretty critical as we've been burning 6% of fuel every single lap. And while it says 1 point, I was about to say 1.1, it's actually gone down to 1.0, things are gonna be incredibly, incredibly close. We're gonna come up to turn three here. We're gonna outbreak ourselves slightly here that's always the danger when you're saving fuel. You lift and coast, you think you can brake a little bit later because you're not carrying as much speed and it just kind of messes with your braking points. So a few mistakes here. We need to minimize these as we come through turn number three and now turn number four here. We've got 4% left at this point. People who've been watching my videos for a long time will know how conservative I like to be generally and that goes with the fuel as well. So as we move down to 3% now, you can imagine I'm rather concerned and I've got my eyes glued to that fuel gauge. We're coming through the left and the right here. I'm expecting it to drop. There you go, 2% now. We've still got a little bit of distance to go and this is definitely going to be the closest I've ever taken it to running out of fuel. And as we turn into the pits here, We've got 2% and it's going to go to 1% and thankfully we're going to make it. But we come in with just a single percent of fuel left. There was nothing more we could do and we've maximised everything we can. So all we can do now is change boots, fill up and see what all our hard work has done for us. So as we come out of the pits here, we're going to find ourselves in 11th place. Not bad considering where we started. Not bad at all and it's not all over yet as the top two, Smokey and Vegas, are yet to come in. So they've done a fantastic job with fuel saving. So I expect to be in front of them come the end of this lap. But we're going to get a bonus here as top quality Russ, the actual pole sitter for this one, has gone round and he's dropped it coming out of turn number three. So we're up into the top ten with a couple more places to be expected at the end of this lap. So fingers crossed we should be starting the final lap here in P8. So as we exit the final corner here onto the start finish rate to start the final lap in this one, as expected the front two come in and we're up into 8th place. Breaking down into turn 1 for the final time, let's see what the gap is to those around us. So up in front we've got 3 seconds ahead and by the time it will settle down behind, we've got three seconds behind. So no real pressure here, we just need to bring this one home. So I don't need purple sectors like that, I need to calm it down. Now I absolutely love races like this, these for me are thinking drivers races. It wasn't all about the pace in this one, it was about being smart, having a plan and making the right decisions to make sure that we could execute that plan. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoy these types of races or you just prefer the flat out sprints. I know I like a mix of the two. And to pull off a result like this is really, really good for me. I really, really liked it. I mean, quality didn't go great. We almost got taken out on the first lap, but we fully committed, as I said, to the strategy and we've made up six places here and we've got ourselves into the top 10. Not far to go now. We've just got to come up and over the crest. We've got these last two tricky corners, so we're going to break just at the orange men there. Bring it down to fourth. The fuel gauge is back up. We've got one final corner to do. Make sure we don't cut it, and we're onto the start-finish straight. 
I'm going to pull out here as if I've won the race because I'm incredibly happy with this one. And we're going to come across the line to take eighth place. Now, I really, really hope you enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with this top 10 to share with you. Unfortunately, poor Ken didn't even finish. But I think I speak for everyone when I say that we appreciate you, Ken. But notwithstanding that, I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me for the next round next week at Blue Moon Speedway, the infield version, which should be interesting. But until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. As I say, please make sure you like the video if you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.